I'm sensing a theme on this next one. Brian Kelly is opening every season in LSU with a neutral site game, and he's losing them. He's losing them. Yeah. LSU loses this game to USC, 27-20. I'm already going to shift this thing. We just opened it up, and I'm going I'm to tell you this. Okay. Agree, disagree, let me know. USC is better than they have been under US, Williams. USC is improved. Yeah, and look, you and I both get, – yet another situation where we both kind of whiffed. Uh, it's not quite as bad as the Florida State whiff uh, that we had. But, you know, we were calling for, oh, it's going to be 50 to 40. Oh, my God, points are going to be left and right. Mm-hmm. The yardage well, – okay, the yardage was still left and right. Both teams – Yes. Over 420. That And that's dang strong. That's a lot of passing, by the way. Right. Um, but, yes, dude, USC is improved. Miller Moss is not going to – That that's how you replace a Caleb Williams is – hey, this is like a coach having some continuity. What do you know? You know, And in, yeah. in this case, he's always had good offenses. We know that. He's, his, his defense has been the issue. Um, but, yeah, Miller Moss looks great, man. They lost – look, with, with the things they lost across the rest of the offensive – side of the the equation they still look pretty strong this is this is some really nice continuity i know i keep saying that word but a lot of programs don't seem to have any can't seem to figure it out usc likes the portal of plenty so it's obviously not just that uh for these other teams that can't figure it out but Mm -hmm. absolutely man they look they look improved they look they look like they're going to be a a potential real contender in in the new big 10 i think it's one of those cases where they knew what they had with Caleb Williams, and maybe they laxed off of their coaching jobs. And just I don't That's know if there's, if there's a subconscious thought where like, man, Caleb is going to do this, whatever. Don't get me wrong, not I'm not necessarily a Caleb Williams fan by any means. Generational yeah. talent, special talent. Oh yeah, incredible talent. But you Heck, yeah. now have to get back to coaching the entire the entire thing. And I think you got a really good one in this Miller Moss kid. Who is a polar opposite personality to me. Like the dude looks like he's what, 18, 19, 20 years old. He's got a hint of yeah. 89 in him. I mean, he he looks like a like an old man, right? 27 yeah, yeah. for 36, 378, and a score. He played really, really well. That two-minute drive to close that game out was a work of art. And I'm actually going to credit him and Lincoln Riley for that. Lincoln Riley, one of the best in the games, were uh, not showing you his entire hand, saving that for uh, a fourth quarter. Said drives like we're talking about now. And then you got this Woody Marks kid who hadn't heard of until that night, 16 for 68. Yeah. Yeah. Ran well, found the end zone twice. Zachariah Branch, real quick on him, four for 56. He's he's a – He's a he's a generational talent as well. He was able to flip the field in the special teams game. Uh, any of, any other comments on on Southern Cal as as we get over to LSU and Kelly? Yeah, not really, man. Uh, but wouldn't it you know just thinking out loud and, and thinking in advance a little bit? It, it will be really wild if they've obviously got a long season to go. They've got a lot left to prove and do. But if they are the ones that that come in from the pack and really leave a mark on either, you know, maybe they make the conference championship game. Yadi, I don't know what it looks like, but it would be really wild if it was them and all, and could be anybody else. There's, you know, there's no divisions, but we didn't expect it. We thought they would struggle with the transition, but and, and maybe they still do. They're going to play some really weird games at, across the country and, and really stupid time slots. We know that, but surprising, uh, but very admirable effort from the effort from the Trojans. Listen, I've said a hundred times already, and I'm I'm sure that I've said it to you. You can't you can't put stock in week one. Can't put stock in week one. Okay, I'm not taking away from what USC has done. I am more so speaking to Oregon's performance, and what I'm getting yeah. at is, I don't think UCLA is going to be very good. Washington's obviously going to be down. Did Oregon show their hand? Michigan might be in for it. Okay, so we might have whiffed on the whole Big Ten thing as as well. So I think I think you you, you make a you make a good good point there in on the overall outlook of um, of the conference as a whole. 
But now we yeah. got to talk about Brian Kelly. Yes, we do. Sign I remember. Tables and <laughs> I remember saying. Flipping birds and. <laughs> I remember saying going oh, into yeah. the the preview episode. About his year three, what he does in what he does in year three, what he did in year three Cincinnati, what he did in year three Notre Dame. This one looks different. Now he's not out of it by any means, but he's got some clear trouble. And he alluded to it in his presser that you spoke about, where he slams his hand down on the table and he's frustrated with the body language, with the atmosphere, the energy of his team. Rightfully so. He also rightfully so took responsibility for it. You didn't see those things in 2012 with Notre Dame. You didn't see those things in 2009, I believe, math, with Cincinnati. Sounds correct. You shouldn't see that period in a year three squad. You, no. you, didn't, you didn't see that year three with Butch Jones. No. I mean – he, he's he's one of the few guys, and I say few because a lot of coaches, man, they don't go Napier or Mark Stoops or probably Brian Kelly and go get you a 15-yard penalty because they know how harmful it is. If they lose their cool, if, if, that, if that fuse flips and they lose it in the game, how damaging that is for your defense most likely. Could be yeah. for your offense if you, if you really hate a call. But – Signs of cracking, man. That's just – it's not good in week one to, to have such an outburst. Minor credit to him for taking, you know, responsibility. He still called out his team pretty dang strong. Um, and it seems like with him taking some of the credit, he knows that it's it's mainly – no, no. It's on him, and then it trickles down for, mm -hmm. for how those things are changed and how they, they go from week to week. Mm -hmm. But it, it's such a bad look for an outburst, something – I mean, in, in some cases, maybe you want Napier or Dabo to have a reaction like that because it seems so lifeless, but this is not what you want in week one when the issues are well documented with, with how it's gone. Not at all, man. They're going to have a, a few weeks to get it right before they have a serious challenge again. They're going to host Nickel State. They should flex their muscles there. They're going to travel to Columbia, South Carolina. They should flex their <laughs> muscles there. They're going to host UCLA. I look forward to that one. They should flex their muscles yeah. there. They're going to host South Alabama. Mm -hmm. They should flex again. They're going to host Ole Miss. They've got four solid opportunities to get it right, to create some <clears throat> optimism, to create some confidence, to uh, to right the ship. I don't like him, but I think if there's somebody who can do it, I think it's Brian Kelly. You're probably right. You're probably right. Uh, this gap in in tests in in all that – is I think a lot of the reason US uh, LSU had buzz going into this year. Like, you know, contending for 10-11, I don't know. They're not going to win the conference this year. I've never thought that. But that was a nice a nice start to the season if you could beat the USC team that's had longer standing defensive problems than you had. And, you know, you didn't get it done. Then you had an outburst. Go get things right and obviously try to build from there. You know, it's not – all is not lost for LSU as it may be. In, in Clemson, South Carolina, and in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how they respond. But, but yeah, they've, they've got to figure some things out. They've got to find some fire and really, really continue fixing some of the defensive woes over the stretch before you play a team that scored 76 points in week one. Maybe we need to stop looking at Brian Kelly's career at a whole and start looking at what he's done in LSU specifically because that seems to be different than his other stops. Yeah, He's having these slow starts and he's building, and as the season goes – his squads are getting better. Maybe that's going to be the case. Lucky for him, yeah. he's he's got a solid month to do something about it before they host 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 Ole Miss. Uh, nonetheless, USC gets a win over the Bayou Bengals, twenty seven twenty. 